This battle was the result of the Civil War's most important arms race. The Confederate Navy Secretary, Stephen Mallory, knew the North would establish a blockade all along the southern coast, so he called for a secret weapon, an iron warship that could take on all the wooden ones. But how to do it? No ironworks in the South could build an engine strong enough to power an all-metal ship. But up in the Norfolk, Virginia Navy Yard, there was the hull of a Union ship named the Merrimack that had been burned in a panic by the North when the Southern armies moved on the yard. Her huge engines were completely intact, and the South raised her and built on her hull a 140-foot-long metal fort holding 10 heavy guns. It hobbled the railway system of the entire Confederacy, but they had it built and floating by early 1862. The North got wind of what the South was up to and rushed to make its own ironclad. A brilliant Swedish-born inventor named John Ericsson had a revolutionary plan for a new kind of ship. It would be made completely of iron and have a revolving turret that would let it fire at an enemy no matter which way the ship was pointing. Ericsson called it the Monitor. And now Abraham Lincoln comes into the story. He liked Ericsson's idea and went along when it was pitched to the North's newly formed ironclad board. Without his support, the ship would probably never have been built. Ericsson had to build the most complex machine ever made at the time, and his contract gave him only 100 days to do it. The monitor was bolted together in Brooklyn, and Ericsson made his deadline. Both sides knew they were in a race, and the Merrimack won. She steamed out from Norfolk into Hampton Roads on March 8th and made right for the frigate Cumberland, one of the most powerful ships in the Union Navy. The Yankee cannonballs bounced off the Merrimack's iron sides, and the rebel ship sank her in half an hour. The Merrimack went on to destroy another frigate. It was the U.S. Navy's worst defeat until Pearl Harbor, 80 years later. But the next morning, the Monitor was there. She'd had a horrible voyage down from Brooklyn, nearly sank twice on the way, and her crew hadn't slept for 48 hours when she got to Hampton Roads. But she steamed right in to meet the Merrimack. The two ships fought for four hours, while 10,000 Union and Confederate troops watched from the shore. Then the Union skipper was wounded, and the Monitor briefly withdrew. The Merrimack thought she was retreating and headed for home. Both sides later claimed victory. But the fact is that the Union blockade still stood and the Merrimack never fought again. The battle helped save the Union. If the Merrimack had broken the blockade, England might well have come on, in on the side of the Confederacy. And no battle ever changed the naval world so fast and so completely. Every other Navy on Earth realized that their ships were obsolete. A few weeks later, the British Navy halted construction on all its wooden warships, and a 2,000-year-old tradition came to an end. Ericsson's inventions, his metal ship, his revolving turret, will be with us for decades, perhaps centuries to come.